Hey, what's up, guys? This is MJ, and today we're going to let Dane tell us about some information that he found and he wants to share with the class. Tell us, Dane, what do you have to say to us today? MJ, I want to talk about this hydrogen V8 engine that Toyota and Yamaha have been developing. Um, this article I had you pull up isn't brand new. It's uh, about a year ago is when this first got released. And I was reading through it again and then in reading through this again, I kind of found some more information I thought was neat as far as how hydrogen is developing. So if you kind of scroll through this article, I'll hit the high notes. Um, All right. Basically, like I said, you know, Toyota and Yamaha, both Japanese com companies have kind of combined forces in, in making this V8 engine here. It's designed relatively closely to the 2UR engine that Toyota already has, which is a five liter engine, mm -hmm. uh, the gasoline version makes about uh, 416 to 450 horse, about 370 to 400 foot pounds of torque uh, and, and it's gasoline trim. And that was in vehicles like the uh, Lexus, uh, let's see, RCF, GSF, LC500, IS500 and the Hilux pickup and some of the special models. Uh, There's a few other things that it was in as well. Yeah, I remember um, um, when I worked at Toyota, Yep. We were testing the LC500 and it had that five liter engine. But did you? Oh, so you have driving experience with this thing. So what did you think of like the uh, characteristics of that engine? Well, I didn't drive it, Yeah. but um, it wasn't one of the cars I was testing, but uh, mm -hmm. I've been, I was like the engineer in the car when the driver was driving it. Yeah. So I've okay. been driven around in it a lot and it's, it's pretty fast. It's good. Yeah. Toyota makes a really good V8 engine. Uh, the one they've been running in the in the uh, bigger trucks, like the Tundra has been super reliable since they debuted that thing. And they also had V8s in earlier cars as well, um, especially in the Lexus models, like the, uh, like say like the LS 400, it had a V8 that was real popular at 4.7. Yeah, so was... Hydrogen you're saying. Yeah, but this one, all right, this one they developed to run hydrogen, but it's based off of that earlier gas engine. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got a good pedigree and a good, um, good backbone. So it's see in the hydrogen trim, uh, it makes a little bit more horsepower. It makes 444 horsepower and 398 foot-pounds of torque, so up slightly. That's due to being hydrogen having a little bit higher octane rating than gasoline. The gasoline would be typically be at 91 on these engines. Some trims would be down running regular 87. Uh, so the 130 octane allows you to run, you know, higher compression uh, and then also use more fuel, more timing advance where you can make more horsepower. So that's where that comes from, but it will use more fuel because it has that lower octane. That's kind of a trade-off for you guys that, that don't know. Lower octane, you can burn more, but it takes more. And so doing a little more digging, I found that Yamaha is teamed up as well in this other group that's specifically doing small hydrogen engines. And they're working with all the Japanese Motorcycle manufacturers, so your Yamaha, um, like so we already mentioned, Kawasaki, Honda, Suzuki, uh, they've all teamed up and are part of this other group called, I forget how they say, it's like HYSE, H-Y-S-E, H -Y -S -E, and that stands for Hydrogen Small Mobility Engine Technology. So as I'm kind of digging through this company, they made a, a small engine for a side-by-side -side that they've been doing some testing with, and this thing isn't just... A couple of images and a dyno run. It, they actually raced this thing in, in the Dakar. Do you do you know much about the Dakar? Or should I explain that? I don't know. What is that? Okay, so um, have you even you, you've heard of like the Baja 1000, right? Or are you familiar with that? A little bit. Yeah. So where the Baja 1000 is probably the, the more popular type of um, race that people can compare to, where that is going to be on the Baja Peninsula in Mexico. It's a usually a thousand mile race, hence the 1000. And it is a straight through thousand miles, start to finish. There's no plan stops or breaks. You're doing it as fast as you can, where the Dakar is more rally where there's stages. So it went, it ran in Africa for many years. Uh, it's it, places in Africa got too dangerous. They moved it to South America. I believe this last one went back to Africa again. But anyways, the race over 14 days, stages are between 100 and 300 miles per day. And wow. you have to complete every stage, otherwise you're out. And there's minimal things you can do in between stages to actually work or pair on your vehicle and, and whatnot. It's probably the biggest torture test any vehicle can go through. 
And these, uh, these engines are made it to it? Yeah, so that's kind of the neat thing here. So if you want to play maybe like a little bit of this video, you can hear some of these engineers talk about, you know, kind of their, their plans and, um, you know, some of the development behind this thing. HICE is a technical consortium to study about the hydrogen engine just started this May 2023 in Japan. Mm -hmm. You can see this is a company composed uh, Honda, Kawasaki, and Suzuki, Toyota, and Yamaha. The reason why we want to go to Mission Mir is to bet our engine and the storage system using the highly stress condition. You kind of get the idea for people that want to continue to watch it, you know, but uh, right. yeah, what they're saying is, you know, hey, all of us Japanese companies are getting together, working together, and we want to torture test this thing in the most severe conditions possible. This means there's a real possibility we might get some actual performance hydrogen vehicle engines, not just, you know, your small economy car that's, you know, designed to be an alternative fuel. Like these guys are wanting to you know, really make sure this is a viable option if we're going to spend this kind of coin. That's like a super think? group. Yeah, it really is. Um, <laughs> there was one other time where Yam or it was Kawasaki and Suzuki teamed up together. I forget what they called it, but it was like the great connection or great something, whatever it was, where they basically traded resources in their um, off-road motorcycles and four-wheelers. And they were identical at that point in time in the 90s and into the two, early 2000s where other than the color, everything was the same between those two bikes. They kind of joined forces and we're like, we need to catch up with the rest of the industry and we, we can be stronger together than we than we are trying to compete against each other. So I see them doing the same thing. The Japanese kind of have a unique outlook in that in that sense. They're more about excellence versus trying to kill the other guy. Well, GM and Ford have done things together. I think they've made a transmission together one time. Yeah, but can you think of another example other than that, it was it the eight speed or 10 speed transmission that they're all using? That one's out now, right? But they did one earlier with uh, they had it in the Ford Fusion. Oh, did they? Yes, yeah, so I, they, I guess they've done that a couple times now. Okay, that's good. Um, did you realize that it takes about four times, almost four times as much storage space for hydrogen than it does gasoline? I did realize that. Y yeah, so... I see, you know, some people complain about those cars that they the tanks take up a lot of room like they take they put like the whole center piece running through the whole vehicle they put a tank in there and then they take take up room in the trunk too yeah so, yeah exactly yes yeah, so if you think you have like a 20 gallon fuel cell and that gets you 400 miles you know that's averaging what 20 miles a gallon you would need a, a 80 gallon fuel cell essentially to take you that same distance with hydrogen because um, wow. you're using that much more and you have to be able to contain it at 10,000 PSI minimum. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's, it's difficult to do. So what, so do you think we're going to see an actual car anytime soon? Sure. The car might come out, but somebody's got to buy it. And yeah. Somebody's got to go buy it until they got somewhere to pull it up. Yeah. Again, the, the feeling <laughs> station is the, the hard part. All right. Well, we'll see if these yeah. things get figured out. And Dane gets to have his Japanese uh, super group engine. I think it looks promising. They're going to spend that kind of money on making a, a race vehicle. That finished the race, too, we should mention. All right, cool. Well, thank you for sharing that, Dane. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and have a good one. Yep. See you guys.